Landboards presents Optocouplers Part 3 Circuit Simulation in LT Spice. Here's the circuit as we built up in the breadboard in parts 1 and 2 of this video. The resistor going into the base of the output phototransistor was 20K, and we picked that value with a decade resistor box tuning the resistor value to the optimal value for the output waveform high and low transitions to be symmetric and as short as possible. And here's the output waveform from LT Spice. The green square wave is the input signal and the output signal is in red at the top of the screen. It's going down but it's barely dipping down. Let's zoom in to it and take a look at it. When we zoom into the output signal you can see that the voltage is dropping only down to about 4.9 volts. This is clearly not going to work. The simulation is very, very sensitive to the value of that base resistor. If we just increase it up to 47K from 20K, let's see what we get. With the change to 47K for the base resistor, the output voltage drops nearly down to zero. Uh, the reason it may not drop to zero is the current transfer ratio, but we'll take a look at that in another video. It looks like this is a good solution and perhaps just something that has to be tuned in circuit. We loaded the LT Spice simulation or circuit file up into our GitHub. Uh, go ahead and follow the path that we'll show on the slide here for finding that simulation. Sorry the path is so long. Just a couple of comments about the LT Spice schematic that we created for this project. Normally the purpose of an opto-isolator circuit is to op optically isolate and thereby remove the connection of the grounds between the two sides of the circuit. But we put a one mega ohm resistor here with the explicit purpose of connecting the grounds together so that the simulation results would work and that the ground on the output side would be connected back to the input side. It's got its own independent power so it's not drawing any current through that part of the path. The connection across the top of the circuit between Q1 and R2 should be removed. It doesn't really matter in the simulation and it doesn't seem to affect it but obviously you wouldn't connect the powers directly. Power supply V2 is simulating the input pulse and it's going from 0 to 5 volts. It starts at 2 microseconds and it's a 10 microsecond long pulse. The dot trend 25 microseconds says to run the simulation for a total of 25 microseconds. Looking at the current through the LED coming through the resistor into the LED we can see that we achieved the 20 milliamps we were looking for. And when the base resistor is adjusted to the larger value, the collector current also gets to be about the 4 milliamps that was the design point we were expecting. So other than the value of the base resistor, the circuit performed pretty much exactly as we expected it to perform and as it worked on the bench with the breadboard prototype. So what happens to the output if we drop the series resistor out of the transistor into the LED? You can see we get a very nice speed up on the front edge when we do that. So what about the power dissipation? Does driving that much current into the base cause a problem? Well, for this part, the power rating is 150 milliwatts, and adding up the diode power and the collector emitter current times the voltage across it while the device is turned on is about 50 milliwatts. So it looks like it's well within the power profile of the part. Actually taking a look at the datasheet for the 4N25 part that we're using shows that they have a separate input and output power dissipation maximum. The input power maximum they rated at 100 milliwatts and the output at 150 milliwatts. So at our input voltage of about a volt and a half, 1.2 to 1.5 volts, and 40 milliamps were about half the power dissipation. So we're well within the thermal design point of the part. An interesting point to note while we're here is that the forward current maximum is 60 milliamps and if the part is a current transfer ratio of 20%, that means the maximum output current we would ever be able to get with that part would be 12 milliamps, but the part is specified for a 100 milliamp uh, collector load, something that you would never actually be able to see with uh, even the maximum drive into the LED. For more information, check out our wiki page. We also have a YouTube channel where you can learn how to use these products and we sell our products on Tindy. Thanks for watching our video.